Hello there and welcome to another educative and enlightening episode of African Student Voices on AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. My name is Ajibana Shodakum. You know, all of our shows and our episodes all journey to youth development, women empowerment, and today's uh, topic is different from the, what we are doing uh, on the previous times. Today we're looking at the youth as change agents for sustainable development. You bear with me that with the UN SDGs from number 1 to 17 and also the Agenda 2003 from Aspiration 1 to 7 all together comes together trying to tell us how can we achieve a good environment with where well-being, education is quality, peace and security. And that is all. So today we're looking at how the youth in Africa can also stand as change agents for the sustainable development goals in our continent. With me in the studio are great guests who are champions of the SDGs in their own areas and are doing marvelously well when it comes to championing the SDGs and its goals in there. So don't go anywhere, we'll go for a quick person, we'll come back. I'll let you know who they are and their contributions as youth towards the SDGs. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to African Student Voice on AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. My name is Ajaman Ochidako. And before I went for the post, I told you that today we're discussing the youth as change agents for the sustainable development goals or for environmental sustainability. And with me in the studio, I have Mr. Ninoy Omabo. Uh, welcome to African Student Voices. Thank you so it's much. Wow. Ninoy is, let me say, a global champion when it comes to the SDGs and also the Agenda 2063. So, Ni, glad to have you around. Thank you. And also have here uh, Mr. Ebenezer Kapu Gapson, uh, President for the Ghana Union of Official Students. And also, I can see he's a lover of the environment, also has love for the youth and how they can play a role when it comes to environmental sustainability. Ebe, you're welcome to African Student Voices. Thank you very much. And Kufi Gosex, that's what I call him. Gosex, uh, <laughs> he's Michael. Mike, yeah. you're welcome to African Student Voices. Pleasure. Michael is the founder of Kofi Gosex. Uh, an amazing organization, and we'll be hearing from him more about sure. Kofi Gose. So, nice people, you will come to Africa Student Voices. Thank you Thank so you much. much. All right, so I mean, I mean uh, when we talk about the youth uh, emerging as change agents for environmental sustainability, we, we look around us and say, the environment, uh, how can we sustain ourselves? How can we conserve? How can we save? But let's come back to the bears of them all. Uh, how can we? position ourselves as youth, as change agents when it comes to environmental sustainability. Mm. You know, you've been doing this for quite some time now, yeah. speaking on platforms mm. about SDGs, sustainable mm. living, mm. environmental sustainability. How do you find the youth connected to environmental sustainability? Well, I'll say first of all, um, the concept of sustainable development is not really understood and it's really seen as a cliche. Everybody wants to be involved in it. I believe that um, the SDGs are actually um, the world's most achievable and integrated framework for development. That we, re we really need to look at it very seriously and not more of a, a song that we sing. And so young people um, are going to be the next generation uh, of people. The term sustainable development is described uh, from the world um, Commission on Environment, where it was first, you know, one of the first places where it was it was coined yeah. as um, um, development that meets the needs of the present generation okay. without compromising the needs of the future generations to meet their own needs. And so young people are, are I mean, now we say young people are the current um, generation, but of course, we are the people who inhabit uh, um, environmental sustainability. And so young people play a critical role um, in dealing and meeting environmental sustainability. Um, the question, your question was... Um, yeah, so what are we going to do with it? Because we don't, <coughs> we don't the affairs, we don't make the policies. We mm. are just young and we're growing. Mm. So what have we got to do when it comes to environmental sustainability? 
Yes. What can you do about it? Yes, exactly. Like I said, so we are the people going to inhabit um, the, the next generation if we are able to, I mean, take care of our environment very well. And so the young person, you know, plays a critical role in environment, uh, environmental sustainability. We need to build more knowledge when it comes to the topic itself, the sustainability topic, really understand it and build synergies. Um, I feel like a lot of us as young people do not like to work together in a team. We don't really much appreciate teamwork. Yeah. But I believe that if a lot of us are able to work together, I mean, we'll be able to achieve a lot when it comes to environmental sustainability. Amen. So as I, I, told, I asked Nino, I'm just trying to find out <coughs> what the youth have to do with sustaining the environment. Because you don't sit with the policymakers on the table. You don't make laws. You don't enforce laws either. So then what have you got to do with sustaining the environment? What stake is there for you as a young person? Well, I, I believe that some of these policies that they have been formulated, it needs the youth to be implemented. And sometimes they also need to consider the, the advice or the input of the youth mm. when formulating such decisions. Secondly, I also like to say that when we want to let some, some of these policies be understood, we need to start from the grassroots. Mm -hmm. When I say grassroots, I mean the, le the lowest level of education. For instance, if you start teaching a KG or a class one student what the sustainable goals are, what he or she is supposed to do when he <coughs> or she grows up, yeah. definitely that habit will be inculcated in all of us as we grow up. In modern times, you see every, the youth actually thriving on different agendas. Everybody wants to do something different. But when you, we all come together, we are being trained in the same mindset, with the same ideology, with the same vision, the same goals. I believe that in the next 30 years, 20 years to come, we will all come together and make sure that the global world, will, or even our continent, <coughs> We go the same mile that we want it to go. Mm -hmm. That is a policy-wise decision that we'll be all going to it. Mm -hmm. Kofi, so this is not even from you. I mean, you are a young guy and you yeah, should sure. be enjoying life. Sure. Why must you be concerned about sustaining the environment? You're not even yet there to start looking and thinking about that. We were with fun. Why must you uh, be concerned? What is the interest of a young person like you <coughs> with regards to environmental sustainability? Thank you very much and good afternoon to your viewers out yeah. there and listeners. Um, you know, one thing that we have to bear in mind is from one stage we move to another. What I mean is that the policy makers, they were also used like us. So one day you also think or imagine that I'll also be there. So why don't I start now? You understand? So that's one of the most important things that I don't want to get there before I make those policies. But I want to start now, so then when I get there, I'll be like, okay, so when I was a youth, or when I was at this stage, I started inviting people or doing people, encouraging people on how to go about this SDGs. So it is very, very important as youth to involve ourselves when it comes to some of these things. Because it is when you participate or you do some of these things, you take them into consideration, that is when you realize that it is important out there. In that sense, when you get to that level or when you get to a place where you need to make any policy, you can make policies where you think you involve the youth. Yeah. But for example, when I was growing, growing up, I, I knew of town council. Mm -hmm. But our parents were like, town yeah. council, town sure. council, by town yes. council. But now it is no longer there. Dead. You understand? But I knew of town council. Does my younger sister know? Nope. My two years sister or brother, does he know? Nope. So the thing is gone. But if now, if I knew about town council, it is because of town council that has motivated me to put whatever I have in mind into actions. So you, we need to take everything into consideration so that when you get up there, you can make very good decisions. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of this uh, image, this dystopia, that if, if we don't put ourselves into it and sustain the environment. One day, it will turn to dystopia. There will be no place for us to live. Sure. Yeah. So, Nino, let us come back to the issue of sustaining the environment. Mm. How did you get to understand that there is a need for us to sustain, to save the environment, not for us alone, but for the generation that we, we are not even aware of? 
mm. to come. How do you start to learn on this sustainability agenda? Well, for me, um, I, I, I would say that I'm the kind of person who, I mean, from SHS time, began to think very globally. We have something called the Global Commons, where um, you see yourself as a global citizen. Although I'm African, I mean, you see yourself as a global citizen where you appreciate that, I mean, everybody is a citizen of the world. And so we should be concerned about, I mean, promoting uh, what's best for us. And so having that mindset, um, I got interested in what the UN does and um, what they've been involved in. That's where I actually learned about the SDGs, being involved with the SDGs at a, a young level, voluntary with ISEC and a, a, a couple of organizations. So upon entering the University of Ghana, um, I got more involved with the SDGs and um, that's where I've been involved with uh, a week of activities on Environment Sustainability Week to um, make awareness on the environment among our, our, my college peers at the university. And right ab about around that time, and I heard of a group called Young Reporters on Environment, on the environment. Mm. That's where I got more in, um, involved with even the environmental issues, learned okay. about climate change okay. and how we are having increased emissions. And if we don't take care, I mean, we will not be able to inhabit the, the world that we are fighting for. So I believe like what um, education when you are not protecting uh, or sustainable, sustain your, your environment right. for the next, uh, the future you want to live in. Yeah. And so it, 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 it doesn't really correlate. Mm. And so I got involved with that, and uh, I've been involved with the SDGs, climate change, trying as much as possible to build knowledge as much as possible on the subject, fighting, I believe in, I mean, climate justice, and uh, that's what I've been involved in, actually. You know, I'm trying to gather the information on how you all grew the affiliation to this uh, uh, agenda of sustainable environment. So I'll come to you, um, Iben. When did it start with you when uh, we mentioned Iben growing the affiliation to sustainable environment? How did it start? When did it start with you? Um, funny enough, uh, when growing up, I like... I used to watch cartoons very much. Okay. I don't know if you guys have watched uh, Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Captain Planet. Yeah, Captain Planet. So my, my desire to know more about sustainable development came out of watching Power Rangers, seriously. Mm -hmm. Because eventually they, they tried to talk about first climate change and making sure that issues that involve the weather and making sure that the whole even the world as a, at large is conducive is serene for everybody to live in it enrolls my love to know much more about the sustainable development and by then i won't say that there was sdgs but i would i would say that it was a platform for me to know to also read something about it to know what i'm supposed to do what am, I, what am I not supposed to do? With that, I got to know that, okay, these are the do's that will help me to make sure that I don't do something that will go contrary mm -hmm. to the, to the uh, causing environmental degradation. Yeah. These are some of the things that we do that will make sure that the environment is serene yeah. for my... I also know that if my friend is suffering from something which I am causing to the atmosphere, mm -hmm. that means I'm not being friendly to the environment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So therefore, I need to ensure that I don't do something that will harm somebody who is close by. So with that, I also got to know much about it. Great, great, great. Kofi, so how did it start with you? Okay, you know, everything is about passion. Yeah. You know, like, um, even with the three of us over here, everybody has a passion or the field that he's working on, even among the 17 SDGs. Yeah, exactly. You understand? So mine started when... Um, I think it started from the house. I, I used to sleep with a younger uncle, Abu Ajay. And anytime I was the one who used to wash his clothes for him. And anytime I would be washing his clothes, I would see, I would see this pure sachet from his pocket. I was like, Charlie, you're not a kid. Why do you put this thing in your pocket? <laughs> then he would watch my face. And like, you tell me uh, you are not a good citizen. I never understood. So that was JHS, primary to JHS. And my parents would be like, Abu Aji, you're not a kid, so why do you always put Piotr Sachet in your bag or pocket for him to be washing? I didn't understand. So when I went to SHS and they were teaching us this, I was like, oh, okay, so this is what this guy has been doing. So when I came back, I just 
decided to do that. And funny enough, anytime I drink water and I just squeeze the water out of it, put it in my, my pocket, my friend be like, hey, Mr. Gentleness. <laughs> you know, so I never knew about these SDGs. Yeah. I never knew about them. So at a point, I realized, oh, we have something of this sort. So I began building on that. So that's how that's it began. That's a fantastic way yeah. for mm. what I've with mm. the SDGs and also the environmental sustainability. Let's go for a quick pause. So we come back, we'll find out more on the youth as change agents for environmental sustainability. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to African Student Voices on AATV. My name is Ajibon Ochudako and I have with me my guest on the show when we're discussing the youth as change agents for environmental sustainability and before we went for the pause earlier, we were talking about how you all grew the affiliation towards environmental sustainability and how you got to know about the SDGs and even the Agenda 2063 and how you were putting it into practice. But let's come to the main issue here. There's a problem. The problem is that we have some factors that are hampering the youth in joining in, in this whole movement. Would you say you are alone in what you're doing? Are you alone? It's like taking you in a home in a million, you are the only person who's conscious about social environment. Do you feel that sometimes? You do? Sometimes. A lot of the times I do. I mean, I, I try to put, put it out on social media and advertise a t-shirt, whatever I'm doing. And people think I'm weird, like you're wasting your time. Charlie, what are you doing? Mm. So I, I really feel left out, mm. sincerely. I so, I mean, on this, on, on this issue of being left out, let's look at the issue of lack of awareness, education, and the best practices that we have to see. Mm. Do you think that we lack the awareness and also the kind of best practices that we have to see around us that will also influence us to join in the movement? Do we have that occurring often in Africa? Yeah, so, you know... Um, the Pan-African Strategy on Youth uh, for Environmental Sustainability sp speaks about education for sustainable uh, development in Africa. Yeah. And we will actually have a whole strategy for uh, making it culturally sensitive to fit Africa's context. Mm. And so education plays a critical role, and, I mean, in reforming our mindsets as young people. Mm. I think we are very much relaxed, but education is a very critical. Um, Nelson Mandela said, Education is one of the most powerful weapons that we can use to change the world. And indeed, it's true. A yeah. survey was done in one of the Asian countries where um, they taught them about education for sustainable development, the concept of you know, living your lifestyle so that it shouldn't co compromise the ability of future generations mm -hmm. and, I mean, your, even your children to meet their needs. And after the survey was done, a lot of the students said that, I mean, they were now very much more passionate about these environmental issues than before. So education holds a very critical role. We need to start putting these um, habits of sustainability inside our educational um, se sector across all levels, from KG to SHS, GHS, wherever. We should be doing that and, I mean, be more practical about it than more of the theory and what sustainable development means and all those things. And so, hey ben, did you learn about the SDGs <coughs> in school? Which, at what level did you start learning about the SDGs? I think in the university. Mm. Sincerely, I think in the university that I started learning much about the SDG mm. when I started doing a little bit of student politics. It was um, somebody who say I'm the archaic type of person. I don't like, I'm not somebody who is into social media. I'm the type that I like listening mm. to music, radio. So basically, nobody to talk to me about what SDG is. Mm. and. When I got into the university, I got, um, I got into an environment which I felt, okay, this is, a, I'm in a different environment. People are doing certain things. I have to make sure that I adapt to those people. Mm. That is how come I got to know much about the SDG. And truth be told, it, it has actually influenced my, some of my decisions growing up. Mm. It has made me know more it has also given me the avenue to also interact with people to also get more knowledge about what the SDG is, mm -hmm. what are the things that I need to do. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's good. And sometimes I also feel because 
I, I, I didn't get to be part of such a policy, it's, it's growing up or it's being implemented. I, I had little knowledge about it. Because, for instance, if uh, Kofi here happens to be somebody who sat in a policy decision like this, yeah. and Kofi is growing up, definitely Kofi knows the cons and pros of the policy. And he will be able to educate those around him. And those around him are all youth. Yeah. Normally, because we would say the old people sit in their comfort of their offices and formulate such policies for us, the youth, we, we don't kind of relate with such policies. But sometimes we need to let them know that we have such genius ideas, mm -hmm. such brilliant ideas. So when they when formulating such policies, they should involve they should involve the youth in such policies. Mm -hmm. So that because every day, day in, day out, the youth are dynamic. They are very they are very intellectuals. Yeah. They, if you sit with a, a twelve year old kid and and you discuss issues like this with the the, the child. I can tell you the number of ideas this sure. child would give you. Yeah. You'd be amazed. Sure. He would give you different, different policies, different ways of implementing such policies. Okay. So we need to let, let the education go down there. Let these students, let these children also feel part of this policy. Mm -hmm. And it will help us. Kofi, do you think our media in Africa basically have supported enough when it comes to the awareness creation on everybody's sustainability? Hmm. Yes and no. Okay. Yeah. Yes, in the sense that, you see, now the world is all about politics. Yeah. You know, you open TVA politics, TVB politics. So, um, at times, they only talk about it when the government in power brings something on board. I, I wouldn't like to mention any party, but now a party has brought um, uh, 20, 2010, 2020, uh, the, the year, by the end of the year, we should be the cleanest city. I don't want to be right so that they will realize that I'm talking about this party, but I know people know about it. Yeah. By the end of this year, Accra should be the cleanest, cleanest city. city. You understand? So far as the government has made that comment or that policy, the then the media takes charge. Okay. But the media, on the other hand, the media itself will not sit down to lecture or educate the youth yes. on their own. Okay. So if not for the policies of the government, they will not act. That is what I know of. But if the government doesn't come in, oh, let's do this, that is it. They will not do anything. But I would have wished the media on its own will come and let's say they will even formulate policies and say, okay, this man this year, let's say Radio A is organizing a cleanup exercise or even monthly or like, so that at least the youth also realize because most of the times people watch TV stations, mm -hmm. they listen to radios. Mm -hmm. In as much as you organize programs for most beautiful, most this, most this, can't the media on the same platform do something similar so that the youth will be like, okay, even if Station A is organizing this, then meaning it is very, very important. Yeah. Because it is because I was talking to a friend three days ago and she told me she's going, she will be going for most, most Beautiful. I was like, oh, okay, so if the same media has sat down to maybe organize this Most Beautiful, that same media would have also been able to sit down to put that habit into us. Yeah, for Queen City. Sure. Mm. You understand? So yeah. if the government doesn't bring like, oh, a crash should be the cleanest city, that is it. For the reason why they don't do, I can't tell. But I would wish they also sit down as media, come together, let's do this, educate the youth, do this. Thing. But at times I don't blame them. Mm. At the long run, it is the decision of we the individuals. Mm. You understand? If they tell us and we don't do it, they've done their part because DS is to just make the thing public or make the world know. But if they make us know and we don't act towards it, it costs 90. Yeah, yes. so I, I just wanted to say that um, when it comes to topics as these, everybody has this role to play. Yeah. There are almost like five um, sectors where, I mean, when we are t talking about environmental sustainability and climate change, and I mean, SDGs, yeah. 
roles that we have to play. The private sector has its role to play. The government has its role to play. The academia has its role to play. Yeah. The media has its role to play in making sure that the awareness creation and I mean educating the populace goes on. And so the media's role is very critical in playing their role as well as everybody. Great. Yeah. Just to add up, um, so, some media houses, you know, as you were saying, form this beautiful beauty pageant. Mm -hmm. in the I believe that um, if these same media houses could set agendas for political parties, political leaders, to come on platforms to discuss political uh, topics, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. they could also take up certain sure. SDGs bring it for a whole week exactly. engage the youth engage the policy makers who understand this particular issue if not for a fact that maybe a particular government is is undertaking a particular policy that is an, an sdg inclined mm. they will not discuss about it mm -hmm. okay. if you tune your tv station it is either government has done this the opposition has done that everyday politics if, and you see, because of that, the, the current youth don't trust the media. This is what I believe. I, I think I, this is what I have come to understand. Mm -hmm. The current youth don't trust the media. Yeah. Because it is either a particular media is affiliate, affiliated to a particular political party, and therefore these youth do not, they don't like to attribute themselves or go or take or watch the content of the particular TV station. But if these same TV stations could come or these media houses could, could engage themselves with the youth, bring up policies, for instance, let's have a, uh, the, 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 the whole greater accord, let's have a, um, the most cleanest community, mm -hmm. award that, that community. Definitely, sure. if I'm a youth in my, my area, I would like to be somebody who says Asafache. <laughs> Bring all the youth together. Let's 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 clean. Let everybody wants to feel big because if this man is coming from Dansuman mm. and I'm coming from Medina, and at the end of this month, uh, the the maybe TV three or Metro TV or AAU Just TV to your is saying that to, to according to research that they have done, they are awarding Medina constituency or Medina as the cleanest community. Yeah. When I come here and I sit here, I'll tell him that, hey, come on, my, my, my yeah. constituency. <laughs> you, 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 you yes, you see, and, and, <laughs> and definitely it is, it is something that mm. it will encourage the youth. Okay. It, yeah. will bring, it will bring the youth, because everybody wants to get himself involved. Okay. And how do we get ourselves involved? Let this, let this team, these media houses, bring up such programs. Mm. And I'm telling you, it will, it will be like a surprise yeah. to you. Yeah. Mm. You will see the number of you who would get themselves involved. Well, well, yeah. well. You, just, you just brought something that's quite a circle. I think you, you can all team to keep team together and then build a concert about this and make it happen. It, it, it will be very interesting it, 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 to it's find that, out that. It is something it's that um, Medina, I sat with the, the district chief executive that we, we, we are planning to do. Mm. We are having an award scheme for the best uh, electoral area. Mm. Award us because we are coming to your. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we are having the, the best electoral area whereby when we come, uh, there is a team from the, the district municipal office, mm -hmm. there's a team from the committee that is in charge of uh, the, uh, the, 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 the award scheme. Yeah. We are about five member team. We will go around the best community. Maybe we decide to maybe we look for the school in your community then maybe we'll paint it oh, okay. that, that is what nice. we want to that do because we believe that we are not we can't give you money that's sustainable and when we do when we paint an institution i believe that it's going to bring plus to your sure. community yeah. because the next time we are coming we are going to mark that same thing yeah. that building mm -hmm. and it is something that we we are in discussion with mm. I, I think this this idea would would need i mean you we should get more hands on board because there's sure, more to it sure. that you, you've exactly. done well to this point. I think there's more that can be done to make it big. Uh, great idea. But, you know, um, looking for the, the politics in it, uh, the lack of awareness, enough of, I mean, the challenges. What can we do to, as a youth to rise up and then take charge in terms of becoming change agents for our environment sustainability? Um, what, uh, Kofi, what would you say the young person today 
can do to become a change agent for the environment sustainability? Okay, so thank you. Um, before you change someone, you need to be a changed man on your own. Yeah. You understand? So for you to take up any of the 17 SDGs, make sure you are abreast yourself. You know what you are about. So that in case somebody comes and like, why are you doing this? Because per your explanation, that is what the person is going to decide whether to join you or move away. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this with respect, respect to what um, happened to me. Yeah. What I'm doing, when some, someone comes and you explain the thing to the person, you'll be like, oh, okay, I love it, so I will just join. Mm -hmm. You understand? So if you, the person, you know what you're about, and you're able to educate the people or your people, your friends around you. Bishop Dr. Ward Mill said something. He said, um, the people that you can influence are people around you. Okay. Because you can't be here and influence somebody in, let's say, Lesotho or like, <laughs> you understand? People around you are those that you can influence. I mean your friends. So if you're able to change your friends out there, I change you, you're a friend, that friend also changes someone, then it goes viral. In that way, your friend will be like, because of that, um, I remember in the house, you don't litter in my house because immediately you do that, I'll just tell you to pick. So one day my sister did that and I told her, pick. She picked. So she went to school and she came, I was like, brah. I was like, yeah, she said, do you know today somebody littered and I told the person. I was like, oh, so you, you've also started. <laughs> so I was very happy that she has also taken it upon herself. Mm. So because of why uh, how I taught her how to pick, and uh, she has also inculcated that habit. Mm. So now it is out there. I know the person that she also told, maybe that friend will also go out there. Mm. And so we have a very, very important role as youth. We don't need, we don't need government to tell us to do the right thing. Okay. Because we know that us at this stage or this our ages, we know what is good from what is bad. So if you know, I'm being specific with uh, littering and environment because that That's is my field, you. you understand? Yeah. So allow me to express myself. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You know, we don't need only the government to come and tell us, do this before you do it. Yes. The government needs not to tell you don't litter. You know that when you, you are littering, it is wrong. So why do we do it? So me at times, I just brush off, excuse me to say, brush off the government because we also have sense of humor as human beings. You know, it is not good to pour refuse uh, refuse yeah. them in the gutter, and you are doing it, and you call on government to come and no, it is our responsibility to know that this is right, this is wrong. So at times, I don't even blame the government at all because you don't expect the government in power to come and clean the gutter in front of your own house. At times, I hear this, I was like, My brother, you can do I saw a video going viral where it was raining, yeah. the rain had not even started, Madina. and it was Madina, yeah, it was Madina, and two women who. I, I'm sure they are mothers. They are still looking for the woman. Oh, they've got them. Oh, really? Yeah, they have been arrested. I, I was surprised that they took this uh, sack. <laughs> <laughs> at, the, at the side. And they, 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 they were, meanwhile, they, <laughs> the rain had not even started to know whether it will rain or not. So far as the weather is cloudy, it will rain. And, you know, these are parents. They are supposed to teach their kids what to do and what not to do. So if you don't do these things right and we expect the government to come and Charlie, we are going to kill the environment and the next generation will get nothing to live on. Well, I mean, would you want to say that the SDGs, um, the goals in there are so, um, also, there's this mystery around it, that you must be a top class student to, to be concerned about the SDGs, because you don't even know how to get an A in class. You don't know how to even know the SDGs mm -hmm. from 1 to 17. So what must we do about that for everyone? Tonight? It's not about a mystery to know what the SDGs are. What do you think we should do? So, um, I'll first give the brief of the history of the SDGs. The SDGs goes far back as 1713, where um, ancient writers wrote about living in harmony with nature and your fellow human beings. Right. Now, we have something called the tragedy of the commons, where a lot of us are living lifestyles that um, are very selfish. Now, living in the global commons and having one um, common society for us all, Accommodates that we live in a society together. Mm. And so the SDGs is, is, is coined on the concept that, I mean, we should be able to live our lifestyles that everybody should benefit, human beings should benefit, our plants sh should benefit, as well as human beings. That's the concept of the SDGs. It's not a book thing, it's not a theory thing, but just basically 
living in a society where everybody lives in harmony, mm -hmm. because you're a human being doesn't mean that you should destroy, or because you need wood doesn't mean that you should go and be cutting um, wood for furniture. I mean, you should consider that plants, um, or, uh, animals also depend on plants. I mean, creation and biodiversity is interdependent. And so that's what this, the concept of sustainability, mm -hmm. where the SDGs was built upon, okay. actually means. So, okay. um, Eben, let's look out. So what's the in for the youth now? If a, a young person is okay, now I'm going to dedicate time to be environmental conscious. I'm going to take out my environment and I'm going to pull my young people, my friends together in it. If it becomes a, a national agenda, how, how can we keep sustaining the youth so that we, we don't die off? Because your project, for instance, it can be a one-time project. We'll all be enthused about it. We'll all get involved. But how do we keep it moving on? What can be the unending motivation for a young person to be concerned or be part of this environmental sustainability agenda. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I would, I would always say that when I'm doing something and I'm able to convince Kofi and my brother yeah, yeah. need to be part of the, the project and they understand the idea and they love the idea. When even I get tired at a point, they would push me to still fight on. Mm -hmm. You know, all what we need to do is we need to let everybody understand the system, they understand the concept. Let everybody, let, let the person have a feel of belonging that, okay, this project I am doing, I feel I belong. Okay. I feel I'm home with all, everybody. Okay. When we were growing up, as my brother Kofi was saying, uh, there was this tankers when you when mm. I, when you are going to school in the hotel that tankers will have to run and go and check what's what you know what's going order they, hmm. <laughs> by then your mom or your dad would have maybe have left and have gone to work but you you knowing that yeah. you have to come back mm -hmm. definitely you have to come back to do the cleaning so what is stopping one what 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 we have to do now is that we some of these people in conjunction with government, let us bring them back. Exactly. Personally. Mm -hmm. in, when we bring such people back, everybody would feel that, okay, he is mandated to, to make sure that sure. the environment is clean. When you see somebody littering, because you are an agent of change as an individual, because if I drop a sachet of rubber in front of your house, and you know I am. Go you are the town council people would come in, worry you, senior. <laughs> please, what will you tell me? You tell me to pick it. Definitely, you, sure. because you don't want you don't want a, a situation whereby you will be sanctioned, your or your home will be sanctioned. So we all need to get ourselves involved. Mm -hmm. We all need to know. Sometimes, if you if if it is it's about cracking the whip, we have to. Exactly. Sure. When one person is being used, everybody would, would know that, hey, hey, Black Kofi has been used though. Me, yeah. I don't want I don't want trouble. True. So one, what I think we should do is that we should make sure that we all get ourselves involved. Mm. How do we get ourselves involved? By making sure that we do the right thing. Okay. Two, we need to make we need to be ourselves agents of change mm. in our own way. Two, we need to crack the whip when somebody goes contrary. That is what I think we should and Just do. to add a little to what um, Eben is saying, yeah. you know, it goes a long way to still come to the government, even though it is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. At times, you ask people why they litter, and they'll be like, there is no bin. And even if the bin is full, there is no car to just convey that rubbish to wherever it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And even the refuse dump itself, you go there and Charlie. It's a mass. It's a whole lot. So, you know, it all boils down to the government. So what is the government doing about it? Yeah. You can bring hundred and so so many policies on board just to make sure that the environment is clean. But at the long run, Thank where you. do we put this refuse? Mm. Where do we put them? Senior, that those refuse dams, I'm telling you, I, 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 I happen to work with as I said, I happen to work with the DC. Okay. And I'm telling you, 
people bring their waste from their homes, mm. from their homes, and just place it in these dams. I'm serious. I've had incidents at Medina where I saw, I eventually saw a woman, a mother, and a child carrying their refuse in Paulatin, opening the thing and dumping their home refuse into the. And I asked, Ma, why, why are you doing this? And she was like, Zoom Lion will come up for it. And you see, and because of this, for instance, I take a sachet of water. The, the assembly knows that at the end of maybe every Sunday, the bin is supposed to be full, looking at the kind of things that the street takes. So they know it is normally bottle, sachet mm -hmm. water, maybe hardly will somebody drop maybe something big. So let's say, if, give or take, by the end of the week, declare it. But at the f you, I, I can first tell you, days. first two days, <laughs> when they come for it, it will be full. Because some people are bringing their waste from their house. So basically, it is not, gov it is not just government. It is about we, the individual. Mm, okay. It is home waste. Let the collectors come for it from the house. So that the ones on the street, and even now, they are even, people are stealing the, the ones on the street. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's true. The last time we I went to I happened I happened to be very close to the assembly because I have some bit of I want to do a project. So yeah. I happen to be very close. I do a lot of research with them. So they would if you go they are they are grieving because there there, there are a lot of beans in the in the area, but they can't account for them. So this is what I want to find out. What can they you do to help and this situation you know okay. um so we i just talk. wanted to touch on what um is being discussed briefly i mean we've been doing education for the past 100 uh, six years yeah. since ghana has been in existence right yeah. and i mean if you look at the the if we are if if we are to look look at our culture and be culturally sensitive education hasn't really been able to achieve much when we talk about sanitation especially yes. what we need to to do as he said earlier is to crack the whip yes. look at rwanda you can't use any single use plastic in rwanda because there's a law that you can't carry a, a black polythene bag in rwanda mm -hmm. and it's been done when you go to the airport and you get to rwanda one of the things they'll check in your, in your baggage is that you don't have a single use plastic and so we need government to be hard on the policies also as well as that what about, you know, you know, I'm trying to talk about how the youth, you exactly. and I, can be interested in this agenda okay. with the issue of incentives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can incentives be a way to drive every young person to be a change agent? Um, and how can that be deployed? You know, um, I, 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 I remember making mention of passion. Mm -hmm. You understand? It depends the passion of the person. Mm -hmm. Because, um, sorry to say, Mr. Host, maybe you might be passionate when it comes to uh, SDG 8, mm. which I've forgotten. Because we have some which talks about gender equality, mm. eight, no uh, eight, poverty. Eight, five, ten, uh, all about equality issues. You understand. So when it comes to SDG 6, mm -hmm. which talks about clean water and sanitation, yeah. you know, it depends how the p person is passionate about how to keep the environment clean and how to make sure that our water bodies are also clean. Yeah. If you're not passionate about it, forget. Yes. So if the youth is passionate about we making the environment clean, there's nobody no will even tell you to just pick it. There's, there's no motivation on the passion. They don't. They, and also, like my brother is saying, <laughs> no motivation. Because I don't want to dive deep to what my thought is, you understand? But at times, you be like, you go and let me just chip in this. Mm -hmm. I remember doing my second project at, um, from Opongro to Baoleshi traffic lights. Mm -hmm. Look at the stretch. Very long one. Then I went to Ayawasu West Wagon for equipment for the cleaning. If I should tell you what someone told me, <laughs> I ended up using my money to rent the equipment. Mm -hmm. And the person I'm talking about is 
a prominent man. And the person told me, what if one day I come and vie for position there? And what will happen? So they will not give me the equipment. The person will not even sign for them to give me the equipment. Hmm. So if I was to be someone who is not passionate about sanitation and clean water, I would have just forgotten about it. Hmm. You get it? But because I was passionate about sanitation and how the environment should be clean, I removed my last CD. It was the painful aspect of it was that it was a day before the cleaning. That was the day he told me they will not give me the things. So if it was not for me to be passionate, I would have forgotten about it. And you know, if they see that Kofi is passionate about cleanliness, then my friends around me will also follow me. Okay. Because they see that, oh, let's help our brother. Let's help our sister. So if uh, Eben is my friend, and Eben has seen that Kofi is carrying this baller, he can't carry, so he's coming to help me. And he does, and people are praising us. Next time, when Eben is coming, he will invite me, Oni, let's go and help Kofi. The last time when I carried it, people were clapping for us and they were. So Oni also go and tell another friend, oh, mm -hmm. let's go. So that is how the terrain goes. So if I am motivating myself, if you know the motivation is not coming from anyone else, <laughs> it depends how passionate I am with whatever I'm, I'm doing. Mm -hmm. people, so you think incentives don't, don't actually they change do. They do. They do. But here lies the case, they are not coming. So what mm. do you do? Mm. So just as he said, opportunities play a, plays a very critical role. Also, there's a saying that, I mean, opportunities meet sure. preparation. Yeah. If the opportunities come and you don't have experience with being, I mean, part of the environmental um, space, you'll not be able to, you know, achieve much. For me, when I joined the University of Ghana, I've been involved with the environmental issues. We tried to organize a program at the University of Ghana and we approach the Switzerland Embassy. I don't know if you've heard anywhere that the Switzerland Embassy and Embassy has supported, I mean, any um, student group in Ghana before, but they did sponsor us with some amount of money. And so if you are not, I mean, been involved in the thing for a long time and connected through passion, I mean, the opportunities will never come. And when the opportunities come, you fail at it. So we need to prepare ahead of these opportunities. The SDGs as a whole provide a lot of opportunities. But we as young people, I mean, incentives are very important, especially in the system that we find ourselves. Mm. But I mean, you need to defy that and need to prepare yourself really well. So that when the opportunities come, you'll be able to face and, su and succeed. Yeah, I'm thinking of a system whereby you bring up some, some let's say, uh, ghosts. If ghosts is what we're dealing with right now, if you bring a pack of, let's say, um, rubbish then you just put it in the machine and it will give you free food or something yeah i mean yeah you know you know <laughs> imagine you go says you know what you we normally do is uh, we organize cleanup exercises mm. and um, very soon we'll be coming to your area 14th november wow yeah madina zongo Junction. okay so myself i don't live at madina so we can link up and sure we'll talk after that so you know the only thing I do to motivate them is that when they come, I make sure I give them breakfast, lunch, you know. And the secret behind at times when people come, they'll be like, oh, Charlie, my love affair is finished. So you have to even tip them. You understand? Those are little, little means of me motivating them. So next time when you call them, they come. Mm -hmm. But myself, I don't get any motivation from outside. Maybe I'll ask a few friends, then they will give me some few amounts of money and all that. But the little thing I can do to motivate them because when somebody comes, he or she gets, I'm not saying the person comes because of food, but when the person comes, they're like, you're able to give the person breakfast, you're able to give the person lunch. I think the person will appreciate the fact that he came for your program and you're able to make sure that he or she was filled. Yeah, well, mm. You yeah. understand? So he can put that money that he was supposed to buy food with as transport and go home. So that, that, that's a little thing I'm also doing to motivate people who also come board, on board when it comes great, to cleaning. Great, great. I think at this point we have to do a wrap-up. But, you know, this wrap-up wouldn't be like a normal wrap-up. It's a wrap-up <laughs> where you have a message. The message you have with regards to the youth becoming change agents for environmental sustainability. And that message goes straight to the young person out there that you want to speak into, that you want to inspire. So, starting from, uh, you know, just look into your camera and then say, just speak to someone's heart about... Yes, so I just want to say that um, I want to use these three L's. Listen, 
Um, make sure that you are listening to the right things. A lot of us as young people are really talking too much, talking about um, a lot of things, policy and all, but everything requires more action now than ever. Mm -hmm. We need to listen more to the news, listen to what's happening on the environment and be informed and, be informed and take action. The next thing is to link, make sure you network enough. Networking cannot be underestimated in this time. And so you should try as much as possible to be connected to a lot of people. There is, that's where your opportunities will come out. And also learn. Be an avid reader, read about everything, and then stay informed. The other thing is that the environment issues are a lot, but you can start from refusing to take single-use plastic. Make sure that the plastic you, you take is recycled. And then the next thing is that we can try as, uh, as much as possible. When we are not using um, lights, we should put off the light so that we conserve energy. Um, we can plant more trees, we can drive less so that we reduce carbon emissions, we can decide to walk more and cycle instead. There are very minute things that we can do to help achieve environmental sustainability. We, ha we just have one earth. Take it serious, be aware, and take action. Great. Eben, your message. Well, I believe that um each and everybody is an agent of change. Mm. I believe that if you change, you change everybody who is around you. Good. And I also believe that when you, you decide or you have the passion to do something which would help society, society will award you, society will reward you, society will praise you. Okay. Dr. Kwame Nkoma knew that he was going to develop a country called Ghana. And to date, his name is being mentioned. So if you want your name to be written in your community, in the archives of your community, be an agent of change. Be somebody who would influence somebody in your community. And when you start from your community, your name will also go far. Fantastic. Kofi? Um, I always call my people Ami. OK. Yeah, Ami of Goal 6. Yeah, I'm the founder of Kofi Goal 6. And GOSIS talks about clean water and sanitation. So what we do is we normally organize cleanup exercises. Um, so, so far as the environment is dirty, we just survey the place, we go and clean. Mm. My youth out there, I'm also a youth just like you. This thing came in mind not because of any political or financial reasons. But it came because I also want to help the nation achieve the sixth goal of the Sustainable Development Goals. Okay. So please, let us come in our numbers. Anything that you see someone doing to make sure that the environment becomes a harm, please, you can talk to the person to stop. If you are hearing me out there or you are watching me out there, I'm using this platform to plead with everyone. What we've done is enough. We should just stop and clean the fields. I'm using this opportunity and this platform to invite everyone on our next upcoming cleanup, which happens on the 14th of November 2020 at the Medina Zongo Junction. You can come, it starts as early as 6 a.m. Latest by 10, we are done. Item 13 is assured. <laughs> Just come in your numbers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's very nice. <laughs> 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 All right, so it's, it's been a nice and interesting discussion on youth as change agent for the environment sustainability. Believe me, um, we have just one earth, as Nino has said, and we have to be change agents, as Eben said. And believe me, amongst all the goals, caring for everything about goals, this is our daily life. It's what we have to do always daily. Sanitation must be clean. So I would say thank you very much for the time that you watched this program. My guests were great and their uh, submissions were wonderful. I believe you also had a show of it and you also brought your contribution to the discussion. Keep being an, a, change of, uh, a change of change. Keep being conscious about the environment and keep being a champion. Sustain the environment, not for yourself, but for the future. My name is Atimon Shulak on this African Student Voices. Um, yes, make a day with me next time on more uh, educative and enlightening episodes. Have a nice day. Bye. <laughs>